Hi, in this video we are going to discuss about equivalence of functional dependency set. This is an important topic from gate exam point of view. Before understanding this, you should have idea about attribute closer and candidate key. For understanding these topics, you can refer these links. So the topic is how to find relationship between two FD sets. You have been given a relation and two FD sets, FD1 and FD2. You have to find out what is the relationship between FD1 and FD2. So if all FDs of FD1 can be derived from all FDs of FD2, which means that FD2 is a superset of FD1. Also, if all FDs of FD2 can be derived can be derived from all FDs of FD1 which means FD1 is a superset of FD2. If 1 and 2 both are true that means FD1 and FD2 are semantically equivalent. To represent this we can use a Venn diagram FD2 is a superset of FD1, FD1 will be inside and FD2 will be outside. FD1 is a superset of FD2, FD1 will be outside and FD2 will be inside. FD2 and FD1 are equivalent, they can be represented using same circle. For understanding this, we will solve some gate problem based on this. So you have been given a relation R, A, B, C, D are the attributes and two FD set, FD1 and FD2. So we will see whether we can determine all FDs of FD1 from FDs of FD2. So first FD is A is determining B, it is also present in FD2. B is determining C, it is also present in FD2. AB is determining D, it is not directly present in FD2, but we will see whether we can determine it or not. AB closer will be A, B, B can determine C, so C will be added and A can determine D, so D will be added. Using FD2, we can determine AB is determining D. That means AB is determining D is also present in FD2, which means that FD2 is a superset of FD1. Now we will see whether we can determine all FDs of FD2 from FD1. A is determining B is present in FD1 also. B is determining C is also present in FD1. A is determining C and A is determining D. These two FDs are not directly present in FD1 but we will see whether we can determine it or not. So we will find the closer of A. So A closer will be A. A can determine B will be added. B can determine C. C will be added. Using A and B, we can determine D, so D will be added. That means A closer can determine A, B, C and D. That means A is determining C is also present in FD1 using this closer. A is determining D is also present in FD1 using this closer. That means these two FDs are not directly present but can be determined from FD1 which means that FD1 is a superset of FD2. So 1 and 2 both are true. That means FD1 and FD2 are semantically equivalent. So we will see one more problem based on this FD set. You have been given a relation R2 with attributes A, B, C and D and there are two FD sets FD1 and FD2. First, we will see whether we can determine FDs in FD1 from FDs in FD2. So, A is determining B is also present in FD2. B is determining C is also present in FD2. A is determining C is not directly present, but we will see whether we can determine C from A. Using A closer, we can determine A. A can determine B. B can determine C. That means using A, we can determine C in FD2 as well. That means A can determine C is also present in FD2, which means FD2 is a superset of FD1. Next, we will see whether we can determine FDs of FD2 using FD1. So A is determining B is also present in FD1. B is determining C is also present in FD1. 
but a is determining d is not directly present but we will see whether we can determine it or not using a closer we can determine a a can determine b b can determine c but d cannot be determined that means a is determining d is not present in fd1 which means that fd1 not a superset of fd2 so fd2 is a superset of fd1 but fd1 is not a superset of fd2 that means these two fds are not semantically equivalent 